I am Matt Beatty with Eli Sports Network, and I am joined by Daniel Wright, Capital High Girls Cross Country Coach, and Junior Aubrey Harrington of the Capital Cross Country Team. Thank you for joining me today, ladies. And I'll start with Aubrey. Um, first question, I mean, normally you'd be in the middle of the season right now. You'd be in that practice probably right now. Um, but there's smoke going on. There's a pandemic going on. Uh, how weird is it? Uh, I'll ask this for Aubrey and then Danielle can answer as well. How weird is it that you're not out there practicing and running and being with the team right now? It's it's almost unreal, honestly. Like um, just being able to see some other people in some different states be able to um, have some competitions. Um, it's hard to see, you know, when you're not able to have that that same thing. But um, you know, I'm just trying to like be positive and stick through it, but it's, it's crazy not being able to have this season right now and not being able to be with my teammates, which is my favorite thing. So, um, yeah, just pretty unreal right now, but there's been a lot of, a lot of changes. So kind of starting to expect change. And Danielle, uh, what about you? So uh, it's, incredibly crazy for me. I was thinking this is the first time in 37 years for me personally that September doesn't mean cross country season. Going way back to when I was running in high school and college and then coaching afterwards. And last weekend was supposed to be capital invite and and we didn't have it and we wouldn't have been able to have it even if there was no COVID and that's just so crazy. Um, it's a rough way to start the school year because cross country is such a great way to build connections with people and students and the athletes come in feeling like they, they already have a group they're connected with. Um, and to not have that, it's been, it's actually been really hard. So uh, I'll ask this to Aubrey. I mean, what are you doing to kind of, you know, stay in kind of cross country form right now? It's kind of tough, you know, outside right now with the smoke being able to run and, and stay in shape, but, what are you and the team doing to kind of keep yourselves ready for when the season does roll around? You know, it's kind of funny because my, uh, my pod, my group that I run with, we were actually setting up times to run and then the air quality got super bad. So we had to stop that. But um, right now it's just a lot of indoor workout stuff, you know, um, constantly working on abs and whatever I can do inside, really. Um, I'm so ready to go out and run. So just whenever that's available, that's what I'll be doing. But um, yeah, just trying to stay in shape as much as I can. And also working on my mental strength has been a huge thing um, during this crazy season. You know, I've never had to be in this much, um, just be in this situation. So being able to come out stronger mentally and physically will, will just be a goal that I have. And Danielle, this is for you. Um, you know, normally you'd be with your team kind of coaching and, you know, getting ready for not the capital invite, but the next meet. Uh, so what are you kind of doing? Are you keeping in contact with your uh, team as much as possible? And how are things going while you guys can't actually compete yet? So, um, I have some amazing team captains this year and I've made a lot of connections with them and they're the ones that are reaching out. Uh, to their teammates and building those connections. Like Aubrey mentioned, their pods that they we kind of established this summer um, and they're working with them. Um, mostly my uh, connection with the athletes right now is just through our group chat. Um, I'm hoping to put together a team Zoom coming up so that we can at least see each other since uh, they won't be seeing each other in the halls for a while. Um, but just connecting um, remotely in what, whatever form we can get. Um, so I'm looking at you guys' state results last year. Uh, you had four seniors that were on that team. Um, looking at what you have coming back, uh, Danielle, uh, who do you kind of see maybe stepping up and filling those roles that uh, were left by the seniors on your team? Yeah, it's going to be really hard to fill those roles because not only were our seniors very talented as runners, but they were huge leaders on our team and they were the motivators and really got the team going. And as I said, I have some great team leaders and team captains this year that are really stepping in and filling those roles. Um, I was really blessed with a lot of, of freshman talent last year um, and girls that have continued 
Um, I didn't get to see them run and track, so we don't know um, exactly where they're at, but they've been working really hard. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to see them get to run, hopefully in March. And Aubrey, um, I'm just looking at some of your results from last season. You've got quite a few top five finishes, and then you had that 22nd place finish at the state meet. Um, looking at your season last year, um, what are your goals and expectations for yourself this year? Yeah, so last year was the first time I've ever competed with cross country and I've ever ran anything above a mile. So, um, you know, I was, I didn't really realize how much I could kind of push myself until districts and state. So I think, you know, this year, especially just losing so much of our seniors that created such a great team, you know, my goal is to just really help our team as much as possible. Um, being able to go to state with my team is one of my favorite things. So hopefully we can, we can do that again. And um, yeah, I have a lot of personal goals as well, just trying to get better times and um, just work on my endurance more. And, you know, I've, I'm very speed acclimated when I'm at track and um, I've been able to do that more, but being able to really focus in on cross country time. And of course, having so much time to train now, I'm just hoping to really come in, um, hitting the ground hard and getting some better times. And then uh, looking at all of your meets, uh, you mentioned it was your first year last year. Um, I'm gonna take out the capital invite since that's a home meet, that's probably unfair. What was your favorite race outside of the capital invite? That's a good question. Um, you know, I really like the silicon invite. That was really fun. Um, our team, we placed in our division, which was super fun. Um, also, those hills are pretty, pretty much a beast to get up. So it was nice to have that completed. Um, and also districts was mm. the most I've pushed myself mentally and physically. Um, I was, I had a goal to stay, to stay with the pack and, and I, and I did that. And, and mm -hmm. um, I beat some people that I had been waiting to be for a very long time. So um, I think those two are probably my favorites just on what we were able to accomplish as a team and, and individually. And of course, state is just fun all around with my team, but probably districts and uh, Silicon are my two favorites. And Danielle, um, I'm sure you probably put a lot of things together for that capital invite in terms of running it and keeping it efficient when the meet actually happens. Um, is it kind of bittersweet to, to not have to worry about planning and preparing for a capital invite? And for yourself, um, what's your favorite meet as a coach to go to? To go to um, Silicon for Silicon is almost always one of our favorites. It's usually really great weather and there's some phenomenal competition. Um, and like Aubrey was saying, it's, it's one of my favorite cross country courses that I've seen, even looking at college courses and things that I've seen throughout the area. Um, it's a true cross country course and I love it. Um, but you really can't compare with district and state. I mean, the, the level of competition there, the, um, just when, last year, especially, um, our girls had the best races of the whole season at district and state. And I mean, I had coaches coming up to me and saying, wow, your girls rose to the occasion. And it, that was really, um, fun to watch them. Yeah. And Aubrey, uh, last year was your first state meet. You placed 22nd, but um, I have to ask, um, did you kind of feel pressure coming into that meet? I mean, it's your first state uh, race, and, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, a lot of emotions going on. And then what did you kind of think of the state course? I'm from eastern Washington. I know Sun Willows Golf Course very well. Uh, what did you think of the course? Yeah, going into it, it was a little hard because I didn't really know what to expect, never going to a big state cross country meet. All I really had was my track experience, which is very different. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was just, I was pretty nervous at the beginning. I didn't start as fast as I probably should have or wanted to. Um, but as I went through the course, I just, I felt better and I felt stronger. And so that's when I was able to climb up more 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess I felt a bit of pressure, just, I put pressure on myself just as a competitive individual. So, um, but I just wanted to do the best I could for my team and, um, just kind of show what I'd been working to do towards like this week, the whole, uh, season. So that's kind of, um, what I was, was focusing on. And then I'm going to kind of look forward to the future. So I'll ask this to Danielle first. Um, projected, you guys are starting uh, at late February, early March. So you've got about six months until the season actually gets underway. Uh, do you kind of have a, a timeline and a game plan for what you're doing to kind of prepare for the season before it comes? Or is it, you know, it's been unprecedented at times and we're really not sure how to plan for something that we might not even sure will happen in the spring? We're going to hope that we are going to get to run in the spring and we're going to be believe in faith that that's going to happen. Um, actually, um, as a team, we kind of talked about a plan, um, you know, having to change our strategy a little bit. So taking this time as being more of an off season where you're just getting your miles in. Um, I created um, books for the girls that have like some optional workouts they could do. It's like, hey, this is a perfect opportunity to try a new workout that we normally wouldn't have time to do during this time. Um, and to just kind of have fun getting some runs in. And then we've talked about, we'll start gathering together again as a, as a group come January. Um, and just kind of like we would have done in the summer, creating that um, off season training. Yeah. But I've been again, so impressed uh, just with the comments. Oops, my lights just in. <laughs> um, Comments that I've seen from the girls in the group chat that are, they're so excited about running and staying in shape and doing strengthening activities together in their pods and, and really keeping that enthusiasm for the season going. And I'm, even though it's going to be really strange doing off season training in January and February, uh, we're going to do it and we're going to make the best of it. And Aubrey, this is for you. I mean, you've been training and trying to keep in shape and, you know, you've got six months until the season starts. Uh, is it just going to be uh, keep doing what you've been doing until the season starts or do you kind of have a training plan in mind leading up to the season? You know, it was just through when track was canceled and then summer was canceled, you know, all these things. It's training's been kind of hard um, just with, you know, figuring out times of teams and everything. So, yeah, I think – going into it, I'm going to try to pick up my training a bit more. Um, I've taken some more rest time and I'm ready once this air gets better to start picking that up more. Um, you know, I had some big goals for this fall. And so um, to be able to get to those points and even more in spring, I kind of just want to make sure I'm, I'm at a better le level than when I started. So yeah, I think I'm going to try to pick it up a bit more. You know, weather is also going to play a, a fun part in that. And we didn't really have to train super hard in December and January. Um, but just staying positive and making sure that I'm keeping my training consistent, I think is going to be a big thing for going into the cross country season. And then um, you mentioned you're a track athlete as well. Um, is it going to be kind of nice to have your cross country season and then immediately afterwards go right into track season, or is it going to be kind of a detriment? I'm not sure if you play a winter sport at all, so I wasn't sure if that was a break that you had in between, but is it going to be nice or do you think it's going to be more of a hindrance? I am so thankful that we get cross country and track, but I think it's going to be very hard. Um, you know, my stride changes between the two, um, the two sports. I think of them as very different sports mm -hmm. because they are for me. In, in track, I'm running 800, 1600, sometimes the four by four. Um, in cross country, I'm running 5Ks. So um, my muscles that I'm using are a bit different. My stride's different. Just my mentality is different. So I think it's going to be pretty hard um, getting off state and going right into track season. Um, you know, again, I'm very thankful we're, we're having these opportunities, but it will definitely be an interesting kind of turnover. Um, you know, those first couple of track meets will probably be, I'll probably be a bit rusty in my, in my speed. So 
Um, I'll have to work on that, but yeah, I, I think it'll be a, a bit difficult, but I'm, I'm excited for it and I'm just excited for cross country right now. So, yeah. It'll be nice because you'll have a good solid base. You won't have to worry about <laughs> any of that foundation mm -hmm. work. <laughs> Already be in shape. And uh, Danielle, I'll throw this question to you first and I'll ask Aubrey. Um, cross country, not traditionally a team sport. Is it at all tough to keep the team element in the sport that's not traditionally a team sport? So at, at Capital anyway, I would disagree with that statement. Our our cross country program is a team with a capital T. Um, we value every member on our team, whether she runs 18 minute 5K or a 35 minute 5K, they're all valuable members of our team. We do a lot of work to promote that. Um, and, and our program has exploded because of that. You know, we've had over 40 girls, you know, the last two or three seasons. Um, and I, and I think as a coach, that's really important to me is that every girl on the team feels valued and important, not just the ones that are getting to score points. And, and Aubrey, uh, I'll kind of deflect the question to you and then word it a little bit differently. So you guys are a big team there. Um, you have a lot of, ex well, not, I guess a lot of experience. You ran last year, you have state experience. Do you feel like you need to take on maybe a leadership role with this team or is it all kind of a collective team effort? Um, I think, like Danelle said, we have a lot of good team captains. And so, um, I, you know, being able to be in, like, the position I am, I do know that I have some eyes watching me. So I just – I take that with a lot of responsibility. And I just, again, like Danelle said, our team is so team-oriented, and that's why I love it. Um, just showing that we are constantly speaking positive thoughts to each other. We're constantly uplifting each other. Um, and even if we don't have the best races and even if we're not scoring for our team, um, you know, we're all, we're all a team unit. So um, yeah, I, I just love our team so much. And, you know, I've, I, I guess I've tried to, you know, just show that, try to show what the seniors left because the seniors last year, they kind of, they helped me grow so much. And so that's my main goal is to sh just leave a little mark of what the seniors left because they were just a huge part of my training and of my running career so far. So that's kind of my biggest goal is to impact the girls like they impacted me. And Danielle, uh, are you a teacher at Capitol? Um, I don't teach at Capitol. I teach at Washington Middle School. Oops. So. And how long have you been teaching? Whew, I believe this is my 27th year teaching. Wow. Yeah. And uh, what year is this coaching for you for Capitol Cross Country? For Capitol, I believe this is my 11th year. I was assistant coach for several years, and then uh, the head coach was Mr. Wright, and he took an athletic director job, so I became the head coach after he moved I was his assistant for several years gotcha so uh I'm asking this question because uh, a friend and I have a podcast on Eli Sports Network called the culture of competition we kind of talk about education and sports and how they interact and I'm curious as a teacher and a coach um is there a big difference for you between teaching a student and coaching an athlete um in some ways there's a lot of similarities but I think in coaching I get to know and a person much better um, because I see them um, as they're really, they're, they're trying their very hardest. They're really putting themselves out there um, a lot more than a student in class may. Um, you know, I, and I do have students that are working really hard, but I tend to see um, more of the highs and the lows with the athletes than uh, with my students. Um, there's something pretty amazing when you see a girl who's worked so hard and then has a race where she has this huge PR and she's just like yipping, yipping down and screaming. I don't get that so much in math class. <laughs> so. And then, um, you know, the season is six months away, um, you know, and everything could change within those six months. But assuming that everything goes as planned, um, I'm going to start with Aubrey on this one. Do you have any expectations for how the season might go? You know, how many meets you might have, who you might face, or are you just kind of taking it day by day and hoping that there's a 
a coherent season and a, a reasonable way to have districts and states? Yeah, um, right now I'm kind of just, I'm thankful if we have any, or when we have anything. Um, you know, I'm very much looking forward to at least districts and state. Um, even if we can only have super small meets for a little while, um, I love big invites and big meets like state because there's so much competition. So that might be a bit less just, you know, in the situation we are in. So, um, you know, I'm just hoping for some good competition, which I know there is a lot in this state, which is great. Um, you know, there's some girls I went against last year that I'm excited to go against this year. Um, maybe some I'm hoping to get closer to. And yeah, again, just get my times down and just trying to catch up with some of those lead girls at state. And yeah, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. So I'm ready to get back on that course and just compete with some girls. And Danielle, I'm sure you've been, you know, talking with coaches and originally you guys were uh, supposed to actually run again in the fall, but then they pushed it back to the spring. Um, have you guys been talking as coaches and kind of figuring out what the season might look like, how many meets you might have, or is it all kind of up in the air at this point? Well, there's been lots of conversations. Um, and then, of course, you know, we, we plan a little bit and then things change. We plan a little bit and things change. Um, at this point, if we go with what the WIA has structured, it'll be about a seven-week season. So that doesn't give us a lot of time before the, you know, district, state, qualifier, whatever that's going to be. Um, whether it'll just be dual meets with teams within our leagues um, or if they're actually going to try and have um, invitationals. I know um, there's a committee that I've been a part of with the WIAA cross-country coaches trying to just figure out what that would look like and coaches that normally host an invitational could they or would they still be willing to host those in the spring if we are able to and so I'm hoping that we will get you know one maybe two meets a week I, I don't know mm -hmm. and are you hoping to still host the capital invite in some capacity if it's possible you know the problem is in our course our, our school's on a hill and our course is the bottom part of the hill. And in March, that bottom part of the hill gets very swampy. And when you try to run a thousand people on it, it, it doesn't go so well. So I, I don't know if we even physically could host that many. I won't rule it out, but it would be really <laughs> challenging. And uh, I'll throw this last question to Aubrey. Um, looking at your times right now, it looks like your personal record last year was 1855 at the Bill Kehoe South Sound Invite. You ran a 1906 at the state meet. Um, what is your goal for your time uh, this year? Yeah, so um, I believe our school record is 1823 or 1820 something. Um, I'm keeping that in mind. So that is something I was hoping to achieve this fall. So pretty much all my fall will be just moved to spring. Um, so yeah, my first goal is to get under six minute pace consistently and then to then get under 1830 and then hopefully get the, the record. So that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve now. And yeah, just trying to get closer and closer to 18 is going to be my goal. And Danielle, um, I'm not sure if you know who holds the record or how long it's been there, but um, talk a little bit about how uh, competitive Aubrey has been at the, in the program and uh, how capable she is of achieving this goal. Well, considering that last year was her first year running cross country, um, and I remember very clearly the day she says, wow, today's the first day I've ran for more than 50 minutes. Um, she's accomplished so much this past year. Um, and last cross country season was really a building block for her. Um, and she's, the great thing about her is she works so hard. She is so competitive, um, but she's so coachable in that, you know, we give, give her suggestions and tips and she applies those really well. Um, and I think as long as we uh, can keep Aubrey from overdoing it and, you know, overextending herself at the wrong moment in time, I really see her as a podium um, finisher this year at the state meet um, and the sky's the limits. I know 
uh, she's got the work ethic that she could be one of those greats from capital. I already, as a freshman, she broke the school record in the mile. And so, and when you think about some of the people in the history of our program, I think of Anna Blue, who was an All-American at WSU. Um, I think of Amanda Wright, who I'm a little, you know, biased towards, you know, who, you know, ran um, for Western Oregon. I think of Lauren Pearson, you know, and Aubrey is right there in that conversation with their talents and abilities. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Danielle, Aubrey, thank you very much for joining me. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed. We're running in March, and uh, I don't live too far from Capitol, so I'm hopefully to be there and uh, take some pictures of you guys in action. So, ladies, thank you once again, and I look forward to seeing you compete in March. Great. Well, thank you. Be sure to keep an eye on our um, athletic.net page because that will let you know what our meet schedule will be. So.